Welcome to Premium Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 1 of 4 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll discuss about user controls in ASP.NET. What are web user controls? Web user controls combine one or more server or HTML controls on a web user control page, which can in turn be used on a web form as a single control. If this definition is a little vague at the moment, don't worry. It will be much clearer in the next 10 minutes. Let's say, for example, I want to capture some dates from the end user on a web form. Obviously, to do that, we need a text box control, an image button, and a calendar control. So when the user clicks on this image that you can see here, the calendar becomes visible. And then from the calendar, as soon as the user selects a date, that selected date will be populated in the text box, and the calendar control will become invisible. This is the most common way to capture dates from the end user. In fact, we have discussed about this in part 32 of this ASP.NET video series when we were discussing about calendar control. And obviously, to achieve this functionality, considerable amount of code need to be written in the web form. Let's quickly review that code. So let's flip to Visual Studio. So here on this web form one, you can see that I have a text box control, an image button. Uh, the image from for the image button is actually coming from this images folder. So I have this calendar.png. That's what we have set as the image for that image button. And then the calendar control itself. Okay. So if you look at the code, as soon as the web form loads up, we don't want the calendar to be visible. So let me run this quickly. So when I run this, you know the calendar will not be visible to the end user, which means the calendar should be hidden. So if it's the page load, if it's not the post back in the sense if it's the initial get request of the web form, hide the calendar. Calendar one dot visible is equal to false. But then when I click the image button, look at that. When I click that button, the calendar becomes visible. If I click that again, what's happening? The calendar becomes invisible. So basically the click on this image button should toggle the visibility of the calendar control. Meaning if the calendar is visible, make it invisible. If it is invisible, make it visible. Okay, so that's what the click event of this image button control should do, and that's what we are doing here. So image button click, what are we doing? If calendar one dot visible, then turn the visibility to false, else turn the visibility to true. Okay, and on the other hand, look at this. I select the calendar, you know, the calendar is visible right now. If I select a date, as soon as I select the date, what's happening? two things are happening. The date that we have selected is populated within the text box and the calendar has become invisible. Okay, So that has to happen within the selection uh, changed event of the calendar control. So whenever a selection of date changes in the calendar control, two things must happen. First thing, take the selected date from the calendar and look at this. Selected date will actually return a date and time. So we are converting that to a short date string and then setting that as the text for the text box control that we have on this web form. Okay, and the next thing is immediately we are turning the visibility of the calendar to false. Okay, so that's what is happening here. And then obviously the final thing is when I click this button control after I have a date selected, that date will be printed on the web form. And how am I retrieving the date? I am simply retrieving the date from the text box and then printing it on the web form using response.write. Now if you look at this, you know, it's a simple in our control here to select the dates i'm using three controls here the calendar text box and that image button okay and there is you know considerable amount of code as well here around 10 lines of code okay now let's say in my project there is a need to capture different dates for example on different web forms i'm capturing different types of dates like start date date of birth registration date etc now Wherever I want to capture these dates, on each and every web form, I will have to, you know, repeat this HTML markup and code. Okay. Now, instead of doing that, we can actually encapsulate everything into a single web user control, which in turn can be used on multiple web forms. Okay. This way, we are actually reusing the same code, which saves a lot of time in terms of development and testing. So, in short, we can say that user controls increase reusability of code implement encapsulation because we are actually encapsulating all these three controls into one control and not only that we are going to hide all of this fun all of this code that you see here within that user control implementation so user controls are actually a way of implementing encapsulation 
and this is definitely going to reduce a lot of development and maintenance time because though you copy and paste this code on multiple web forms you know to make sure that this code works in line with the other controls and other pieces of code that we have on on multiple web forms correctly we need to test that as well not only development we also need to test that okay so obviously using user controls is going to reduce a lot of development and maintenance time as well okay now let's go ahead and see how to turn this code into a user control now to add a user control to a web form it's very simple and straightforward just like how you add a web form to a web project in the same way you add a web user control right click on the project add new item and that from the new item dialog box select web user control so scroll up web user control and give that a meaningful name I'm gonna call this calendar user control okay and click add now if it was a web form we get dot ASPX extension but this is a web user control so web user controls have dot ASCX extension and another difference if you notice um, for web forms you know you have the page directive but for web user controls you will have a control directive instead of the page directive okay and then another difference is on the web form look at this you have all these basic HTML elements so HTML opening element closing element and then you have head closing and opening body closing and end closing uh, opening and closing but then a user control need not have all those okay because a user control will be used on a web form and a web form already has that HTML head and body so there's no need or reason why a user control should have them again that's why you simply will have the markup for your controls that are going to be part of this user control so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna copy whatever markup that I have here so I'm gonna take all that markup from here okay and then paste that in this web user control page okay so that gives us the UI okay so I have this UI and then what else I want to do obviously we want to implement that functionality look at this web form has a page load event similarly web user control also has a load event okay the page load event so when the web form loads up what we are doing we are actually turning the visibility of the calendar off so I'm going to copy that and then paste it within this control here okay and not only that whenever the image button is clicked we want to toggle the visibility of the calendar so I'm going to copy that as well and paste that within the calendar control so all I'm doing here is copying and pasting that code from the ASPX page to the ASCX page which is nothing but the user control and then finally whenever the selection in the calendar changes you know we want to retrieve the date from the calendar populate the text box and turn the visibility of the calendar to false so copy that and paste that in the web user control okay and then I'm not going to copy this button click event why that's because when I click the button we are simply retrieving the date from that text box and printing it onto the web form now when I use this web control you know this calendar user control on a web form that's when I'll do that okay so at this point look at this this control uh, you know we have this image button click that's implemented here and then finally the calendar one selection changed that's also implemented here so let me go ahead and build the solution so control shift B look at the status bar build succeeded okay so we have the user control ready okay now we can use this user control on any web form now let's say for example in my project I'm going to have maybe 10 or 20 web forms where I want to capture dates from the user instead of copying and pasting all this HTML markup all this HTML markup and this code on each and every web form what I can basically do is I can use this user control that you can see here on those web forms in fact we'll discuss about adding this web control you know the web user control to multiple web forms and using it in the next video session but now let's quickly recap the differences between uh, the web form and web user control so designing and implementing web user controls is very much similar to web forms web forms have the extension of dot ASPX whereas web user controls have the extension of dot ASCX web forms begin with at page directive and they can have HTML head and body elements whereas web user controls begin with at 
control directive and cannot have HTML head and body. We have just seen that as well. Just like web forms, user controls also have code behind files. So web forms have you know web form one dot aspx dot cs, whereas web user controls have you know dot ascx dot cs as their code behind files. So in this video, we discussed about creating user controls. In the next video session, we'll actually see using this calendar user control that we have just created on a web form. Okay. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.